Hi guys and welcome back to Archie Hamilton Racing and to another video where today you join me on a bank holiday where we're going to have an amazing day out. By popular demand you guys love when I make the videos being with Surrey Police and today I'm going to get the chance to do exactly that. I'm going to get the chance today to be in the back of a police car, an unmarked car, a marked car, you name it, we're going to have an amazing day ahead. But not only that, we're going to get the chance to answer the questions you have been firing in to us uh, and also to the police to answer them. Because sometimes you're not quite sure if you're modifying your car, can you do this, can you do that, can you have this on your car, can you have that. Well today we're going to be answering your questions and one of the big topics I want to ask the police about is these new mobile phone laws. The law recently just changed and I want to get a little bit more of an indication of what these exactly are. But like I have mentioned, I am all about driving fast on the track, doing what you do on private land, on the track, etc. But on a public road when there's other people's uh, lives at risk as well, just drive safe. That's what it's all about and not putting other people at danger. And today I'm really, and I'm really passionate about that. I really, really am. And I don't like any of this flat chat on roads. Just chill and be safe and that's what i really just want to push uh, on the whole road safety thing it's a big thing for me and today we're going to get the chance to have a good one so anyway let's get going dan how are we good how are you good to see you again thank you again. thanks for having me again it's all right how's it all going yeah it's good yeah as you can see today we are changing up slightly what we were in last time we were in a marked car i think last two times we've been in marked cars um for the majority of the shift but out in the Audi today with you in the unmarked. Give a little bit of a change to your content. Quickly explain this car then. So this is an Audi A4. Uh, this is one of two that we've got on the fleet currently. Uh, it's an S-Line Quattro. Uh, great, fantastic car to drive. Uh, really, really nice. Um, it is cool, isn't it? It is cool, yeah. It gives us, like I said to you before, gives us the ability to be a little bit more proactive without people realizing that we're there so some of the stuff that you might get to see today might be a little bit more that we're following people they don't necessarily realize that we're there but I'm quite bright as you can see I've got a slightly different unit so if, if you are driving there's a chance that someone would notice but there's also yeah, chances these, someone these cars aren't covert cars they're not there for covert operations it's just there for uh, unmarked work so we're not trying to hide from anyone as you can see I'm very bright sat in the driver's seat with my bright high vis on Let's have a look at when the lights are on Oh, so lights, very cool. That is, well done, love it. I'll quickly show what's in here, um, and what, yeah, basically what we're doing today, yeah. and what we have in here. So inside, we've done a little bit of this before, but for those people that maybe haven't seen it, um, this is our main, uh, what we call a matrix board, uh, clear tone, so this has, AMPR built into it. This camera that you can see just up here is one of the internal AMPR cameras, which if you're driving your car um, and it's got uh, no insurance, uh, no tax, no MOT, all that type of stuff. You'll get it straight away. We'll ping up on that screen and we'll be able to see it. Yep. Uh, it also has a matrix board on there, so any messages. So for example, if I wanted to say to somebody, um, let's say I want them to follow me, I press that and then in the back. Oh, I'm going to the back. I'll go to the back. Oh, oh yeah, follow me. Uh, which is great for if we're uh, on a faster road uh, and we want somebody to follow us to a safe location so we can have a chat with them, we'll put that on and hopefully that person would follow us off um, and yeah, we'd have a chat with them about what we need to speak about. Perfect, and what we're, we're also going to talk about some other stuff as well uh, because I have been getting, well people fire in their questions and we like people firing their questions and there's I think there's one thing which has been massively in the press, and that is the uh, mobile phone laws. Mobile phone laws. Um, so lots of people yeah. uh, talk about, you know, what are the laws, what's changed, yeah. and everything else. And, yeah. and we're going out today to do similar things, but what's changed? Yeah, so mobile phone legislation has changed fairly recently in the last few weeks. Um, the old law was very outdated, so uh, what you could do on your phone was very different to what you can do now. So now the, the law has changed. 
in essence, without spending, we could spend ages talking about it, which we could do on another video, but in essence, now, uh, any time that you hold your phone in your hand and the screen is illuminated, that is an offence. So we're talking, if you pick it up to check a text message, to, even just to check the time, if you pick it up and look at it and it's got the screen illuminated, that is using your mobile phone whilst driving. And that's six points. It is six points, yeah. So there, there's a long list of things that are included on the legislation, but essentially the crux of it is don't use it whilst you're driving. If you pick it up and you're looking at it, that's going to be an offence. The only two times that you are going to be exempt from that are if you're making a payment stationary at a, let's say if you're going for a drive through like yeah. a fast food restaurant yeah. and you've got uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay, other variants of pay on your device, you can use your phone to pay for that item whilst you're stationary. Once you've finished doing that, you've got to put your phone down and then you can continue driving. The only other exemption is if you are calling the emergency services, uh, the caveat to that is that it, you have to have nowhere safe to stop so yeah. if you're driving on the motorway and you can't stop and you need to make a phone call to the emergency services that potentially would be an example of when that would, would be the case but if you were just traveling down a 20 mile an hour 30 mile an hour roads yeah it, you know residential area that's that's not going to cut it that it's not safe for you to stop so yeah only when it's not safe for you to stop is that an exemption and this is all this is all for people's safety and you see things you don't want to see every day yeah and if these individuals that use their phone weren't on their phone you some things could be very much avoided yeah so it's basically for everyone's benefit yeah I think sometimes yeah you know we do go to collisions that involve people that are on their phone and it's an entirely avoidable circumstance and sometimes fatal sometimes can be unfortunately yeah with yeah. people using their phones whilst driving totally avoidable unnecessary life lost as a result of somebody being on their phone that could have waited an extra five or ten minutes for them to make that phone okay and we've just pulled over uh, we are on the side of the road and we are basically, well what are we doing Dan? You can Hello. tell us. Uh, so we are currently at a spot on our area called Newlands Corner, some of you will be familiar with that. Um, one of our colleagues is just, we've got a laser device out, so at the moment we are currently on a national campaign for vulnerable road users. Right. So this route is loved as you can see by cyclists, motorcyclists. Yeah. Um, so we're just out here conducting some speed patrols. Uh, my colleague Gary has got a laser device. Um, we'll be. And the cyclists love the fact he's got a device. Yeah. The rest of the road users safe. So it's quite a busy intersection, so you've got a lot of cars that are turning out. You've got cyclists that will be wanting to come out this way and go up the hill. Um, and yeah, if you've got people flying down the hill in excess of the speed limit, you're right. It's um, it puts them at a lot of risk. You can see why this causes accidents. And anyway, we're gonna just sit here for a little bit, see what we find, and then uh, see what the speeds that people are doing. But this can get you from roughly, I think it's over 500 meters away. Um, so this is actually getting them from 120-ish meters away from uh, to up there. So yeah, we're just gonna see what we find. But it's getting busier the road when it's quieter. It's, uh, yeah, but we're not out here just, you know, to get people. We prefer that people don't go fast. That's uh, the whole aim of the game. So we'll just see what happens. This person was doing 50 in a 40. So we're just gonna have a word and just see what is going on. What's going on with uh, the speed, basically? So I'm just going to give you a bit of an update. Uh, so the individual who was pulled over on this road, it was coming from uh, the 40 down, doing uh, 50. So quite quite a bit over. Basically, um, there was more things that were found out once they were pulled over. So. It's uh, basically everything gets checked at that point. Um, so mo no tax and no MOT was found when they were pulled over. So doing 50 in a 40, yeah, then obviously everything else was found out from that uh, way as well. And also on the MOT, there was an advisory, uh, which is from a while ago, and then that then flags up something else. So it's just important to keep up to date with stuff. If, they, if you have an MOT and it has an advisory, 
and things like that just get it sorted i think that's the best thing and tax it's so simple quick and easy to tax your car um and yeah that's basically what's happening at the moment all these checks are still going on but uh it's just a reminder that if your car needs tax if your car needs an MOT, just do it get it done save yourself the headache and everything else and also the safety if the advisory is safety related just get it done right then dan what's the update so that one that we stopped just a second ago uh, was uh, going a little bit quick down the hill and uh, once we've stopped it we have had a look at the tax insurance mot which is what we would do normally this one right this one right there yeah. which is just um, talking to that so it's been out of an mot since let me just get my screen up again you can see on there it's got no tax and no mot yep um, so what we do is we have a look at what the previous MOT history was and the warning that was on the last MOT with the two back tyres were quite seriously worn. On inspection, which we'll take you through in a second, the tyre, or well, both rear tyres on that car are so badly worn that it's dangerous for her to continue driving. So as a result, we are prohibiting that vehicle from being driven, which is called a PG9. That vehicle then has to stay here and cannot be moved until those defects are rectified because the, the tyres are so bad. Let's say if she drives on a motorway at 70 and she clips a little bit of debris or something, that tyre will potentially blow. Uh, it could, could cause her serious injury. Or someone else. Or serious injury. Yep. Um, and that's why it's important when we do these stops that we check over these things because if we don't and we let her go, you know she's got quite a serious defect with her car that's um, a serious safety concern. So that's why we're processing the paperwork at the moment. Um, and is this points at this point? What happens at this point? So she at the moment is being dealt with for, for the tyre offences. It, it, at the moment it's a dangerous condition. So yeah. The vehicle is being driven in a dangerous condition which is a separate offence. So uh, my colleague's just processing all those bits and bobs now. I'm doing the paperwork for the vehicle to say that we're not allowing it to move anywhere so this is being prohibited she will have to get the, re the issues rectified taken to a garage make sure that it's okay obviously it's got no MOT on it as it is yeah she needs to go and yeah you need an MOT once the defects are rectified and, and then from there then she'll be allowed to drive that vehicle back on the road again once it's all roadworthy the range over here was doing 53 while they're still sorting out the car in front, which has the tire issues as well. This is the gun. This is the gun that's uh, for the speeding. And this shows that this caught him at 180 meters away. And then the speed was 53 miles per hour in a 40. So that basically uh, shows you a little bit more about the gun. And then uh, the policeman will look through this eye just here. And then that will then have a little red dot. And then that puts it onto the location of obviously the car. And then, yeah. That is literally it. And if we pick it up, it's quite heavy. It's not, not too light, but it's, uh, yeah, crazy. And it got a lot further than that. We're just off to a collision involving the motorcyclist and the vehicle. Uh, it's just a little bit further up ahead of us. We're not too far away. Um, myself and my colleague, nearest units to it. So head up there, see what's up. We've got a report of injuries to the motorcyclist. Unsure what the injuries are at the moment. the condition of the of the, of the biker not yet so um, they've said that they've got a leg injury and shortness of breath chest injury and that particular road is only a 30 mile an hour limit but that's not to say that the injuries couldn't be worse I've, I've been to worse injury collisions on slower roads than that involving motorcyclists so wow yeah Realise it's a police car by the police. That is unreal. I know. This, this is nothing. They haven't even touched the brakes. This is yet. nothing. Now they've seen.
Right, Dan, what's the update on uh, on that one then? So, both drivers actually left the scene before we arrived on that one. Um, not for anything untoward. I think the seriousness of the collision was a little bit less than it first came in as, so they've obviously exchanged details and then have made their own way. But I guess in that situation, you still need to go. There's a call, you gotta go. Yeah, if absolutely. it's serious, minor, yep. someone's come off the bike, you gotta go. Yeah, if, it, if someone's come off the bike, if there's an injury, we still go. Uh, we record it as an injury road traffic collision, so it's important that we go, uh, just on this occasion, the, the drivers have sorted it out amongst themselves and they don't require it. But exactly what we were literally just talking about, what we pulled over for uh, with the speeding, yep. a motorbike has already had a crash, yep. and that's exactly why that backs up exactly what we were just talking about. Um, and yeah, luckily on this occasion, it was not uh, a serious and a life-threatening injury, but it could have easily been. Could have been. Any yeah. sort of, you know, thing the wrong, different way, that could have been life-threatening and that could have been someone's child or someone's parent. Yeah, motorcyclists just by their very nature are vulnerable just because of the fact they're not shrouded in metal like we are now. Yeah. They're, you know, they're out and if they get hit by anything, they're a, a lot more at risk of injury than than we would be in a car. We would obviously get injured if we got hit quite hard, but a motorcyclist is a whole different yeah. uh, whole different story. So um, yeah, like you say, that's why we're out doing these enforcements. Um, and yeah, we're, we're out there to look after everyone. It's not just vulnerable road users, but it's just because this week is uh, the, the safety campaign nationally across the UK for, for vulnerable road users. That's what we're out doing. Exactly. So Dan, I'm sat in the back and what's going on? Uh, so we're just driving up and down one of our busiest stretches of roads for us, this is the A3, so we're in the unmarked, I'm just in the outside lane, I'm just having a look to see if anyone's on their phones, I know we've spoken a little bit about mobile phones and it's um, sort of changed now the legislation which um, came into effect a few weeks ago. So if someone's even touching their phone now or, you know, yeah. I guess it's more the handheld thing isn't it? Yeah, so the, the legislation now is, is different to what it was think about mobile phones what they used to look like when the law was first introduced was a long time ago um, what they could do back then is minimal compared to what they can do these days but the law just sort of never caught up so there was always loopholes before or yeah, not um, there's, there's been some high profile cases where people have managed to get off of uh, using their phones whilst driving because it didn't fit with what the legislation wording was and that's just because the legislation was quite outdated. Yeah. So it's now been changed so that if you're driving and you pick up your phone in your hand, even if the screen is illuminated, that is an offence. Yeah. Which it, it didn't used to be, it's changed. So you find that a lot of people go up and down here well, wow, on, on yeah, their phones. It's yeah, you, you, um, yeah. We get a lot of people like ahead of us, you can see brake lights and it, it might get towards a bit of a traffic jam. People think that's a perfect opportunity to check their text, check their WhatsApp, and all that type of stuff. And um, whilst they're pulling along at whatever speed they're doing in the traffic jam, uh, that is now an offence. Right, Dan, I'm sat in the back and what's going on? Uh, so we're just driving up and down one of our busiest stretches of roads for us, this is the A3, so we're in the unmarked, I'm just in the outside lane, I'm just having a look to see if anyone's on their phones, I know we've spoken a little bit about mobile phones and it's um, sort of changed now the legislation which um, came into effect a few weeks ago. So if someone's even touching their phone now or, you know, yeah. I guess it's more the handheld thing isn't it? Yeah, so the, the legislation now is, is different to what it was think about mobile phones what they used to look like when the law was first introduced was a long time ago um, what they could do back then is minimal compared to what they can do these days but the law just sort of never caught up so there was always loopholes before or yeah, not um, there's, there's been some high profile cases where people have managed to get off of uh, using their phones whilst driving because it didn't fit with what the legislation wording was and that's just because the legislation was quite outdated. Yeah. So it's now been changed so that if you're driving and you pick up your phone in your hand, even if the screen is illuminated, that is an offence. Yeah. Which it, it didn't used to be, it's changed. So you find that a lot of people go up and down here? 
you'd well, be on, on yeah, their phones. Be it's common, it, yeah, you, you, um, yeah. We get a lot of people like ahead of us, you can see brake lights and it, it might get towards a bit of a traffic jam. People think that's a perfect opportunity to check their text, check their WhatsApp, and all that type of stuff. And um, whilst they're pulling along at whatever speed they're doing in a traffic jam, uh, that is now an offence. There we go. What an awesome day it has been with Surrey Police. I also have an update for you. Do you remember the last video when there was that stolen van? There was two individuals in that stolen van. It was a crazy police chase through Surrey. Well, I can now talk about that, actually. I think, couldn't talk about it in the last one because obviously legal proceedings etc but those two individuals have gone to prison so that in terms of uh, it was crazy that is uh, good news on that front um, and then the first day we had a police chase the second time we did today we didn't uh, but you never know I basically turn up to a shift um, and anything can happen today was very much just road safety based and I hope you do appreciate that some people on my Instagram have been saying oh you're you're this you're that and I just want to keep people safe on the road that is all about and uh, there, there was a story which I was told about an individual they drove into someone killed them because they're on their mobile phone and things like that can be avoided and this is what this is all about it's all about keeping you guys safe on the roads do all the driving on the track go as fast as you want on the track go into a gravel bed or whatever on a track be safe but just don't do it on the roads i think that's the key um, about all of this and those speed guns seeing more about them learning more about the mobile phone laws and do you know what i'm happy we didn't turn up uh, and see a motorcyclist on the floor injured or potentially worse than that today but the blue run is always an experience always an experience and I was getting so nervous the closer we got to the incident and when they were like oh no it's it's not there anymore I was actually quite relieved a massive thanks to Surrey Police I will be doing more so send in your questions what you want us to answer next and the next one I'm sure will be much busier much crazier but we just never know but I love it and I hope you enjoyed the video I learned lots today and lots of things I didn't really know and I learned it and I hope came across on camera as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Stay safe. See you later.